VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome to episode three of VIP Access. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for listening, for watching from wherever you are. I started this platform in 2018 with a mission to spotlight various African creatives, artists, and it's my honor every week to have an amazing creative and individual sitting here with me on VIP Access. Today, I'm speaking to one of the most brilliant minds when it comes to Kenya's music industry. He is set to take over Kenya's industry, and who knows what else he's gonna do in 2023. I mean, he started off with a really big hit, Kuna Kuna. You know that song, you're dancing to it every day, but there's much more to him behind the success, behind all the hit songs that he's orchestrating every day. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll. <laughs> do, 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 do. V-Quest is here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sasa, um, tense. Um, <sighs> tense. You know, I'm, interviews. I'm, no, I'm with Aniko, I'm not with anyone normal. <laughs> No, Aniko yeah. is normal. Nah, I'm no. the one who's with yeah. someone who's not normal uh-huh. because the way you're doing those beats, man, it's a <laughs> genius kind of thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Awesome. Nice yeah. to see you. Nice to sit here with you. Pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How does it feel to have the biggest song um, in Kenya and still raking the numbers? <laughs> Feels like about time. I, mean. ah! <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm grateful. Um, I'm so grateful for for like everything that's happened with the song. I didn't expect it to be like that, but I'm so grateful for everything. Okay. Yeah. Did you see the chief um the chief man dancing to your song? Yeah. <laughs> I even met him. Ah, really? Yeah. yeah, I even met him. Um I think my label flew him from Kisumu ah. to to come to like an interview and meet me and all that. Oh, so nice. yeah. He's a really good guy. Oh my god, it's yeah. so much fun. Yeah, very fun, very fun. That's nice. That's yeah. nice. It's so nice when you see your music touch people, yeah. you know, who you would never have thought you would touch. Like when you look at him, he looks like a serious guy. And then I had his achieve. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I'm, these are kind of people I never thought they would listen to anything I'm doing. Yeah. And then you wake up one day in the morning and then someone who's a chief is yeah, dancing to your song. Right? Yeah. It's amazing. Like the most unlikely... Yeah, the most individual. unexpected individual. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So I wanted to, to, to get back to the roots of who you are and yeah. the producer you are today, the artist you are today. There's a journey you yeah. must have taken. Um, where did this interest start? You know, because most people will know you from this hit song, yeah. but you know you've been working very hard and putting in the work yeah. behind the scenes for a yeah. very long time. Yeah. What's that journey like? I would say my my everybody usually has this cliche story of uh, I started in the choir or I started in this. I have the same cliche story because um, I was in the school choir when it, back when I was in primary school. Mm-hmm. Um, that's I didn't know I had like that key interest. Kabisa, it was just uh, let me go out for funkies, mm. let me join this thing and go. So as I as I um, continued on exploring music and all that and finding tastes, different tastes in music, that's when I came to know like, okay, I actually love music. I actually want to do this thing uh, for real. Yeah. And, and, and w- like um, that was still in high school? Um, so like in high school, my brother, mm-hmm. uh, there was this one time I came back from school. I was in boarding school. Uh, so I, I come home and then I find my brother had this software called FL Studio. He didn't like it. Um, he messed around with it. He didn't find it um, good because he's more into programming and software mm-hmm. development. So me, I just picked it up. No YouTube, no nothing. Just started messing around with it. I would say, I think my, from Form 2 to Form 4, I didn't even go and get material to know how to produce. Mm. It was trial and error. It was just me trying, okay, this works, this doesn't work. Mm. So from that, that's how I picked up my habit of producing. So I started on as a producer, if I was to say professionally, yeah. You are not just a producer because yeah. you're a songwriter, yeah. you're a singer, yeah. uh, you're a performer. Yeah. Um, in terms of singing and all that, like, yeah. 
or rather in terms of singing and producing, where yeah. did you see yourself most comfortable? Initially, because, um, again, my brother um, introduced me to rap music. And then I, I was a fan. Everybody was a fan of Lil Wayne um, mm. in the 2010s. Yes, yes. And then there's this one time I I, I heard a song by Kanye West mm -hmm. um, called Can't Tell Me Nothing. Mm. And... I have an inflated ego. So that's so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm shy, but I have a very I am aware of it. I have a very inflated ego because I know I'm good at what I do. So when I heard that song, and that song is so egocentric, mm. uh, it really hyped me up. I listen I remember listening to that song over and over again. And then I started trying to write raps like he does. Mm. Cause I remember I was so obsessed with how he works. Mm. Um he's a producer and artist. Um, I started writing small raps. Of course, they had so many cuss words in mm -hmm. them. Um, writing raps here and there, showing them to my brother, showing them to my schoolmates. There are other, of course, there are other rappers in school, so we'd get together and start writing. So I started knowing how to write from mm -hmm. from that year, and so it was. I think my beginnings in production and artistry, uh, being an artist started from high school at the same time because mm. I would write raps that I would make beats to. Mm. Yeah, so I would sneak into the computer lab because I actually I was actually the best student in computer in the whole school. So I was given the key to the computer lab. So when guys would go, <laughs> guys would go to like uh, sleep, I would go back up, go, get into the computer lab. I'm not reading, of course. And I'm playing FIFA. <laughs> or <laughs> or I'm making a beat. So, yeah, but I would make beats more and then play them to my friends. And yeah, that, that's how the, the process um, nice, gradually developed. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, yeah. nice. And then the transition between high school and Kakamega yeah. um, to Nairobi. Yeah. When did that happen? When you dropped, um, landed in Nairobi, you yeah. know, where do you start in this big bad city? How do you get discovered? How do you get an opportunity? Oh, it was such a crazy journey. Um, mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to KU, do mm -hmm. law parallel, but um, I had in, like issue family issues here and there, mm. so I couldn't. Okay. So I ended up um, doing like um, work at an IT firm, doing data analysis and all that. Ace. So. It's, You're such it's, a nerd. No, it's, it's such a big word for a small job. You are such a nerd. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, but to be honest, I'm a nerd in a way. You are. Yeah. So um, doing that, uh, that's how I started um, meeting up with other guys mm. that do music. And then I met a friend called Bruno. He had a studio mm -hmm. in, I think, Nairobi West here. So I would go every weekend. I would make sure I go there and just sit not even do anything, just sit and because I had never been into a professional studio. So I was just I would just sit there and look at everything that's going on. So I would watch them produce, do everything, and then go back home. Until when they finally gave me a chance to at least mess around with the machines, mm -hmm. know what to do here and there. Yeah. So that's how I would say in Nairobi I came to like start off in music. Was through my friend called Bruno. Okay. Yeah. So you were watching them, but then yeah. actually learning what they were doing and kind yeah. of mastering it. So yeah. when they gave you a chance, you yeah could actually put things together. Yeah. Oh, and before I forget, sorry, before I even came to Nairobi, mm. back at home, um, in Western, there was this pastor. He had his own studio. Mm. Small. I wouldn't call it a studio. Actually, it was just a microphone and. <laughs> a computer. Yeah, but in the so, shacks, that's a, that's, yeah, that's the studio. That is big. That is yeah. big. So, um, he would I would record his uh, uh, gospel songs, and then in turn he would let me like um do my own stuff there. Mm. So I, I recorded some songs that I wouldn't want anyone <laughs> to hear that I made. So um, I would say, yeah, actually that was uh props to him. Mm. That was my first time um being in a studio but being in a professional studio with everything that i know right now mm. it was my friend bruno nice yeah. nice nice yeah. and um you know what what would you say was the moment yeah. that you first witnessed success you know when you first produced that song or 
had a collaboration with that artist and felt like, wow, like, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I, I won't say it's, let me, to be honest to myself, um, the first song that I actually thought was a success mm -hmm. from me, it's not even commercial song. Nobody even knows it. Mm. That was when I discovered my style, uh, blending, uh, I would say rap singing, like I could blend, uh, blend rap uh, lyrics to, and then put some harmonies into mm. it the way, like say The Weeknd does. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I even think Banner Boy does the same thing too. So, uh, there's, there's this friend of mine also, he had a studio. Mm -hmm. Um, I stayed with him for a couple of days in Juja. He's called Zalo. That's if you ask, if you wake me up in the morning, ask me, who's your best friend? I would say Zalo because there's so much he did for me, um, at my lowest moments. So we recorded with him a song called, uh, Kiuno. That's when I knew I could actually sing. That's when I knew how to control my voice to actually sing and actually write melodies. So I would say that's my first breakthrough. Success. Yeah, for me, first for me personally. Story. Yeah, success story. But if you're going to talk about commercial, there's a song I did for Brida. It's called uh it's called Kitu Ni Nono. Actually that song broke broke so many talents in the game. Butros hmm. was on that song. Saru was on that song. Brida was on that song. There's a guy called Denzel Kong is on that song. There's another one called um, Master Vicky or something. Mm -hmm. He's on that song. So Saru, Brida, and Boutros, Mandy too. Mm -hmm. Mandy's on that song. So at that time, they weren't as big as they are right mm -hmm. now. So I would say that song kind of put them out there. Out there. Like yeah, that. It's a trap song. It's a really great song. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And... Um, What's your kind of state of mind when you're in the studio? Like, because most of the songs you're producing, yeah. you know, include so many artists, which means yeah. as a producer, as the main orchestrator, you need to know who's coming in where. It, you don't want it to be too long. Yeah. You want it to be interesting enough <coughs> that when I hear the third verse, I'm still hooked. Yeah, yeah. How do you master that genius of creating a, a, a dope track? It comes off um, from having a good ear for music. Um, and having like years of of fine tuning your ear and knowing like this works, this doesn't work. Mm. When I'm coming, when I'm looking for a collaboration, I could, I don't necessarily go for the name. Mm -hmm. I go for how they will sound on the on the song. And I think that that um, ear for uh, for knowing who will sit well on this song came from the one person that I said inspired me a lot, Kanye West. Because he he collaborates with a lot of people mm. a lot. And you will find most of his songs, most of the time, it's a perfect. Like, you, this person was put here perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Um, if it's a song, there's this song called All of the Lights. He has, like, I don't know, 20 people on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it even had a remix. Yeah. <laughs> like, it has layers upon layers of vocals. And even Drake was in that song. You wouldn't even notice. It's yeah. such a blend. It's such a... so. I spent most most of my time, and this is where I, most producers get it wrong. I spent most of my time learning, not even producing actually. Mm. Just I knew Kanye is my inspiration, so let me learn about him. Let me know what he does. Let me read how he. Let is me break like, down his yeah, tracks completely. Yes, in the studio, how he works, and so when it came to actually making my own music, mm. that's how I am. And even when I'm working with for other people's projects. I, I'm usually very strict on who they're going to bring on the project. I usually put out my suggestions and be like, this will sound good with this person. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Inside the mind of a genius. <laughs> so when it comes to the artists you've worked with, there are yeah. many, there are many, you know. Um, oh, my God, the list is endless. There's Savara, there's yeah. uh, Boondocks Gang. Brandy, my Brandy, yeah. um, Exit Gang. Band, yeah. Boozy Gang, Furthermore, yeah. Yeah. like, who is the artist who you feel like surprised you when, you know, you entered the studio and gave them, like, direction or said, let's yeah. create this? Because sometimes it happens that an artist is coming into the studio with this idea yeah. and the producer's like, no, I want you to go this direction. Yeah. Then at the end, 
you look at the track, you're like, okay, we actually did well together. Who that's, would you say? That's a very good question because Brandy, minor. Okay. There's this track. That it's, I think it's her biggest solo track, if I'm not wrong. No, it's not a solo because she did with a friend. But this is a track called Dark Skin. Ah, we did. Um, yes. Initially, she came uh, with a track already recorded. I was just supposed to do add uh, layers to it. Like, we were just supposed to add some few vocals to it. Mm. I didn't like how it was sounding, but I liked the idea. I liked the chorus. Mm -hmm. So at midnight, it was something like 1, 1, 1 a.m. I just pressed delete <laughs> out of nowhere. Like I just told her, no, we are going to do this again. So I deleted everything, the whole project. The only thing I kept from the initial session was a bass line that it's hardly hard. We did the song again. And by 3 a.m., I remember, she, we were up dancing to the song. And by the t when we released it, it became such a huge song for her. It's an audio, but it's done crazy numbers. She's not even shot the video. Mm. Yeah. Countless challenges. Did it sound very different from the previous one? Yeah. 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 It had the Victor touch <laughs> to it. Nice. Yeah. So I, it was more chill. They didn't have that edginess. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just switched it up to a dance hall um track right. that yeah that just makes someone embrace their their skin and just feel confident about themselves yeah and she so, trusted you with the entire process yeah she did she did nice yeah um i usually make artists that i'm working with trust me because i usually we do something and then they're like okay yeah you're actually right it sounds good yeah you're quite calm <laughs> am in i the studio, am i'm I in the studio yeah <laughs> No, eh? no, I'm, I'm, I'm really when I'm in when I'm in the studio, I'm really um, upbeat. I yeah. talk a lot. Uh, I say, you're giving off the energy. Yeah, you're I like curse a lot in the yeah? studio. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> I the, curse a lot. The, the, the ye in you comes yeah, out. It comes out in the yeah. studio. In in front of people, atakama na wajuani nyote, and um, we are all here. I'll be really quiet. I won't talk a lot. Okay. Yeah. So would you say you have completely different personalities like in the studio and outside? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. very, very, very totally. It's like night and day. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I guess I have to come and see you in the studio. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> and a uh, fun fact, I don't drink or smoke anything, mm -hmm. but I get high on sodas, on sugar <laughs> rush. So me, I just come to the studio, I get a Fanta Passion, and I'm gone. I'll talk. I will talk. It I will be. Gives you a high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just. What? I'll just be upbeat. I'll be all over the place. I'll be working. Yeah. Not even Red Bull, Fanta. Now nah, Red Bull takes me to other places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Sugar Rush does it for me. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good yeah. to know. So you're currently still signed to Black Market Records. Yeah. Um, how has the relationship been with them? You know, during the signing. You know what came out of the signing, you know, what have they done for you that you thought yeah. this is actually good support? Um, first of all, I wouldn't be able to meet people like Father Mo, Joe Fizz, Buzzy Gang, Boondocks, all this, even Brandy, From to be honest, mm. if it wasn't for them. Because I remember Joe Fizz is the one who had my demos, sent it to the CEO, the CEO liked it. I didn't have any numbers, nothing. He just liked them. And then I was signed. It took me sometime now learning how the professional world works mm. yeah the mainstream so to speak um and then there's cash kid and i don't yes. know if you know him yeah cash kid does was really instrumental like he just took me under his wing he even taught me videography we did so many projects with him up to a point where i started now doing my own uh, productions for big names in the label mm. yeah so i would say it's really been instrumental in enabling me reach to the point i have yeah without their support i wouldn't I would, it would have taken a long time i know i would have gotten here but it would have just taken a longer yeah route. probably yeah. yeah so tell me about the coming together of kuna kuna you know yeah. Picking the different superstars that you decided, I'm going to put out my song. Yeah. This and this is the person I want in. And yeah. who comes first? Because somebody like Savara, yeah. um, people Ooh. would expect like he would be the first person yeah. Yeah. on the record since he's more um, accomplished. You yeah. know, he's been in the game longer than most of these people. Yeah. But as, as the producer of the song, you decided, 
Uyu yeah. namweka I think a cover 3. <laughs> yeah. Uh and was it was he okay with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say <Savara>, the truth. <laughs> Savara is one of the most amazing people. I mean, if I had his success, minge kwa. <laughs> <laughs> the ego would have gone yeah, another place. Yeah, yeah, but the guy is so humble. humble. Yeah, really humble. He treats me like He treats me like a genius and I see him as a genius. Of course. Yeah, the way Two genius is like real recognized nah, as real. Oh god. He's he's more he's more he's more than me if I would say. I I didn't expect him. Actually when I sent him the the first demo um nilingozani ambie mbona umeneka mwisho because that I'm used to that with big artists. He didn't. The guy was like, "Ah, oh, release this thing right now." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, sure." <laughs> so um kuna kuna mm-hmm. Kuna kuna first of all started with um the idea it's it's funny I've, I've, um I'll just repeat it again cuz I like it um I hugged this chick she had a small waist uh I liked it she's my friend mm. <laughs> she she probably watch <laughs> this <laughs> so in my mind I I actually told her in my mind um I said I would write a song about a waist I didn't know the words I didn't know anything I just knew I was going to create a song about a waste mm. cuz I had so many songs that I was still juggling in my mind about which one was going to be my first single mm. uh, my first song sorry so like uh, a couple of days a couple of weeks I think two weeks later I was in the studio alone I was just vibing um no beats just listening to random stuff on the internet and vibing and then the words just came to me from nowhere the the chorus mm-hmm. my hands your waist the whole thing just came to my mind like that so um i even i'll even play you the the recording on my phone when i was recording it uh, i just mumbled it i think the only part i didn't have i think the my hands your waist my heart away i had that mm. your lips my lips that's that's the only part i mumbled i i i found the words later mm. so I recorded that on my phone then um I decided it should be something like a chorus chorus mm. where people who are not singing perfectly it's like you ever been to a club and there's a popular <laughs> song yes. and everybody's singing yes, 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 it's yes. like a disorganized yes. organized choir uh-huh yeah, that was what, a vision yeah, for that it to come out vision. that way yes, not yes. like so perfect uh-uh. but it's just like since actually, he wanted to naimba yeah actually when we were going to so the follow I think two days later when I broke exit band to record the mm. the chorus they came with the perfect uh singing i told them no i didn't i didn't want it they wanted to do the perfect eh, no i told them go in there sing it like you're drunk like you're just a crowd yeah yeah and then they did that and it sounded good so after that actually we only recorded it on on a guitar mm. like we played the guitar recorded there were no drums no nothing so after that I was listening to Ruga mm. girlfriend mm. that song called girlfriend I had an intuition to have ragaton drums mm. like he did mm. so that's when the drums the drums came in and then um I put the chords and then I sent it to Brandy Brandy liked it she came hey, she mad <laughs> as have I have she a reaction video. It. I have a reaction video to after she had finished recording. I told her you've written the verse of the year. I swear. She was like, "Nah, you're joking." Nee, nee, nee. Hey. I told her you'll see, you'll tell me. me. Yeah. With this song I was sort of a prophet. Every step I You saw I saw you saw, saw, it. I saw, you saw it how you wanted it. I told her you've written verse of the year. She did. She, yeah. Actually in that session we were with Charisma, you know Charisma? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. And um we we were having but charisma is not in the song no no, no. he yeah. he there's another song okay. i did for him yeah it's called soft life mm-hmm. it's out uh, i think it's it's on dsps so he was there and then uh brandy was also i was doing another song for her mm. and then that's the same day she recorded a verse she wrote it in just a few minutes Jeez, out genius. of nowhere. able to she went she went out came back she had a verse put it in one take i think it was perfect and then after that um i sent it to father mo and then i sent it to savara savara was the last one to record but i didn't know how to arrange mm. them until when i had everything so i decided let me put this rapper father mo in between two vocalists 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so very nice. The arrangement, I think I settled on the arrangement at the last minute. Yeah. Very nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Whoa. And after Kuna Kuna, you do have another song with Savara and yeah. um Bensol. Bensol, yeah. And that is called Cool Me Down. Cool Me Down. Cool Me Down yeah. is already out. I think it was out since December. Yeah, I, I put it on DSPs and kept quiet about it. Mm. But then uh, uh, some people discovered it and yeah. started Actually doing challenges on, on, on TikTok. Boom play. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's also doing well. Okay. Really, really well. Um, we are supposed to do the video and drop it. I think it's only on DSP, so on Spotify, Apple, yeah. and Boom Play. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what's next for for you? You know, after your contract with Black Market um, um ends this year, do you want to yeah. sign again to them, or what's the direction you want to take for your career this year? Especially because yeah. you started on a very high note. You it yeah. ended on a high note, and yeah. I believe the success of Kuna Kuna and um cool me down yeah um you know it keeps growing like there's yeah. a trajectory we we keep seeing yeah. like the growth the numbers yeah i guess more people are discovering you in other countries you must be yeah. receiving a lot of messages so many yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially other countries I, i didn't see i thought kuna kuna would do like half a million at most i didn't think it would go to yeah where now you're 10 million 11 11 million yeah i think <laughs> i think in two days it will be 12 nice in yeah. aida araka ivo Yeah, it's, I don't know. These are numbers I never dreamt of, like, as my first who are, song. Who are the people hitting you up from different countries? Like, which countries? Oh, there's a guy from Romania. Damn. He had a song back, uh, I think, five years ago or something. That has, like, 200 million views. He he hit me up. He's like, I like your songs. Um, the people from Lat- Latin America... The people from they're feeling that yeah that ragaton yeah, vibe yeah 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 so it's it's crazy nice it's crazy it's it's totally crazy yeah wow yeah. congratulations yeah yeah so what's the plan um me the day I'll win a Grammy like Savara that I, will be yeah, that will be the day that, you'll be like to Leah because I'm a workaholic so you're working hard to get that type yeah. of recognition yeah yeah I hardly take fantastic any breaks or anything fantastic. I just want that yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So, could you please give five tips? Yeah. To becoming a dope producer. Yeah. Five tips in your in your camera. Um. Trust. Um. Hey, Tanvaj. Okay. Five tips in becoming a producer. First of all, find your sound and trust it. Uh. Know know the difference between a producer and a beat maker. Um continuously evolve your sound and listen to new sounds that are coming and fuse them into whatever you're doing three work hard work really really hard and four do not compromise your art for anything not for anyone who's big or small or anything always stick to your uh always stay true to your art yeah i'd say that Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I feel like some of those lessons actually um transcending just being a producer yeah. but being a creative or just yeah. being someone who wants to do something like yeah. always be true to your art especially the creatives. Yeah. Um it's been really great, you know, meeting you, talking you. to you and actually I remember Savar gave me your number. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then yeah. I I messaged you and you you responded immediately and I Since thought, then, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was you. I was, I was like, this, this is a scam or something. It was so funny because it was at night, like yeah. at 10 p.m. It I was, was like, PM. hi, V-Quest. <laughs> I really like your song. And some other artists who love your song are saying, Nikusalimie. And then yeah. you're like, can we talk on phone? Yeah, <laughs> it was wonder. almost like Niwewe. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know Aniko. Like, everybody knows Aniko. Oh, thank and you. I didn't believe it was you until Nico. Actually, it really fine to join you when you followed me on IG. Oh, yes. That's when I was like, okay. It was okay. around that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, ah, it's her. It's her. It has to be her. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were like, can we talk? And then my baby was crying. So, so yeah. I, you, you, I didn't call you. Yeah. So I think you were like, I'm a CAA. Yeah. Yeah. Why are they, why was she hitting me up up ala for me nyamaza yeah but then thank yeah. you for, for you know for showing up for picking up so yeah. for coming to the studio for coming to VIP access yeah. um I'm really looking forward to seeing your star continue shining thank you I wait to hear more records from Vquest and yeah. 
you know, the artists we will be producing or signing. Yeah. I think you are really set for a bright future. Thank you. And it's such an honor to speak to you at this early stage of your career. <laughs> Thank I you. I hope when you're, you know, with a Grammy, that you can get a chance to interview. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Asante sana. Yeah. So maybe it Kimalizia too. If you want to tell your fans any message, you know, just want to thank yeah. uh, the Kuna Kuna gang, <laughs> gang gangs. Um, thank you to everybody who's been streaming, watching the video, supporting me. Um, I'll continue dropping more good songs and good vibes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's why we're wrapping off VIP Access this week with this brilliant songwriter, producer, creative. And I promise you every week there's going to be an amazing person that I'm sitting here with who's going to inspire you and push you out of your comfort zone. So, request. Yeah. Shukran, Sana, uh, for inflating my ego even more. <laughs> But yeah, no, for real, uh, thank you so much for the support, for listening to my songs and actually loving them. Um, I hope I even give you more better ones in the future. Yeah. Asante, yeah. Asante. Thank you so much. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.